Hi friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise. It is summer when I'm filming this. It's hot and it turns out I'm allergic to the sun now. Thank you, COVID. And to top it all off, I just applied for a job at a sunscreen factory and was rejected. But that's okay, because I'm going to reapply every couple of hours. Oh. But before I do that, I have a question. Well, two, actually. Have you a scaly friend watching with you today? If you do, I assume you do, because scaly friends love the All Canadian Reptile Girl. Hello, scary friend. Are you male or female? What if I told you, viewer friend, this one crazy secret yet cool thing might have decided the sex of your little scaly buddy? Warning, it will surprise you. Well, maybe it won't. I don't know what you know. Anyways, let's go. Come back. Not you, you're not allowed to go. The secret cool thing that could have determined the sex of your scaly buddy is cool. Yes, you said that. Yeah, I know, but like it's literally cool and also hot. You're not making any sense. Actually, I am. You see, for many species of reptiles, the temperature of the environment during incubation is what dictates the sex of the babies. This is called temperature-dependent sex determination, or TSD for short. Today we are going to explore exactly how TSD works, why some reptiles have evolved with TSD, and the advantages and disadvantages of temperature dependent sex determination. Now, if you are wondering if the temperature of your environment could have affected your sex, there's a really easy way to check. Hold up your hands, look at them, flip them over, just look at them all over. Do you see scales? No? Then you are most likely not a reptile, and your sex was probably established by genetic sex determination just like all mammals. Now, I did say probably. It can really be much more complicated than you might think on the surface. There are circumstances in which chromosomal or genetic sex can differ from what is presented morphologically. You know, what equipment you were born with or hormonally or in other ways. But for simplicity's sake, we will just keep to the basic, if unnuanced, concept of mammals present sex through male sperm with XX chromosomes making females and XY making males. As a process, this is genetic sex determination, or GSD. Conversely, for those reptiles who determine sex through TSD, the sex is determined not at conception like it is for us mammals, but by the temperature that the egg experiences at a very critical period in the middle third of incubation. The interesting thing is, it's not consistent between all species that undergo TSD. The temperature always determines the sex, but how it does it can vary between species. For example, in many turtle species, like my friends Agatha and Poe, seen here stomping in their pen, it's pretty straightforward. Low incubation temperatures, typically around 22 to 27 degrees Celsius, tends to produce males while higher temperatures, around 30 to 35 degrees Celsius, produce females. Yeah, you picked up on that, eh? Yeah, good for you. Um, so yes, I hear what you are saying, and you are correct. Those two ranges don't actually butt up against each other. There's a gap. So what happens between 27 and 30 degrees? It's a toss-up, and sex go either way. However, for species like this American alligator, that was trying so hard to eat me here. Lower temperatures below 31 degrees Celsius produce females and higher temperatures above 34 degrees Celsius produce females too. Wait, is that right? Yep. So what about the males? Well, obviously they're produced between those two ranges, 31 to 33 degrees Celsius. Scientists working to understand how this all works have categorized the ways TSD manifests into three main patterns. We've got pattern 1A, MF pattern, is where low temperatures produce males and higher temperatures produce females. Like I mentioned earlier, common in many turtle species. Stop leaving me. <sighs> pattern 1B, FM pattern, is the inverse where lower temperatures produce females and higher temperatures produce the males. This tends to be more common in those lizard species that exhibit TSD. It's also how the amazing Tuatara looks like a lizard but is not and is arguably one of the most coolest and unique reptiles in the world, does it too. Go here after this video to learn about them. Hi cutie. 
Lastly, we have pattern two, FMF pattern. This is where both low and high temperatures produce females, while intermediate temperatures produce the males. This is found in the aforementioned- Ooh, good word. Thank you. American alligator, as well as other crocodilians and some turtle species that don't use the pattern 1A. So what actually causes TSD in these species as opposed to chromosomal or genetic sex determination like ours, or even the reptile species that don't use TSD like Romeo, my dumeril's boa here, by the way, these guys don't lay eggs. They like give live birth to live young, kind of similar to us, but not exactly the same. I have a couple of videos all about that here. Reset. So what causes TSD? Did you TSD? Say reset to yourself? So what causes TSD? I don't know. And people way smarter than me don't know either. Not really. The exact molecular mechanisms of TSD are still under investigation, but three key factors have been identified. Temperature sensitive genes. These are specific genes in the DNA that are influenced by temperature, leading to the development of male or female gonads during the embryonic stage. There's hormonal regulation, where temperature affects the synthesis of hormones within the body, like um, estrogens and androgens, which play crucial roles in sex differentiation. Then there's epigenetic changes, where temperatures cause changes in DNA methylation and histone modification. These establish patterns of gene repression during development and influence certain gene expressions related to sex determination. There are other factors too. And as I said, the understanding of how these all mix and match and how exactly they express themselves is still growing. But it does give us some insight into how this works, though it still doesn't explain why some reptiles evolved with TSD. How does it benefit them? Well, science hippies have come up with several often interrelated hypotheses to explain why TSD might have evolved and what advantages it might give to the reptile species that use this. They tend to like closely relate to optimizing the species with the environment. TSD provides a mechanism for adaptive sex ratios. It can allow populations to adjust the sex ratio of the offspring based on environmental conditions. It might also help ensure that offspring are born into the environments that are optimal for their sex specific needs. Depending on the species, males and females may have different habitat requirements or behavioral patterns. TSD can align the offspring production with these needs. This flexibility can help maintain a balanced sex ratio, which over time, as you might imagine, is crucial for population stability, resiliency, and reproductive success. By producing the sex that is more likely to thrive under current conditions, TSD can help populations adapt to environmental changes more rapidly than genetic sex determination alone, which leads to a greater evolutionary flexibility and adaptability in response to environmental pressures. Since the sex ratio can be influenced by environmental factors, populations with TSD can often more readily adapt to changing climates and habitats. Basically, the evolution of TSD in reptiles offers several advantages, enabling populations to adjust sex ratios in response to a wide range of environmental conditions, which optimizes reproductive success. These benefits are further enhanced by the fact that most reptiles presenting TSD tend to be very long-lived. This helps these species remain resilient in the face of environmental changes year over year to a point, thanks climate change. You see, it's just not all good news when it comes to TSD, as it poses some challenges for those species in the face of rapid climate change. Understanding TSD is critical for both biological and conservation efforts, especially in the context of record-breaking rises in global temperatures that can potentially lead to skewed sex ratios that are not optimal and can actually threaten the survival of TSD species. Conservation strategies such as managing nesting site temperatures and protecting critical habitats or even collecting the eggs from the wild to incubate artificially are essential in mitigating these impacts and ensuring the survival of TSD species in the eras most affected by rapid climate change. If you're still here, I assume you're having a good time, at least I hope you are, have enjoyed the video and maybe learned some cool stuff about reptiles today. If you want to learn more, you can click here for my top five coolest reptile facts that's over there. The best way to support me and my channel though is to please head on over to patreon.com slash allcanadianreptilegirl. By signing up there, you get exclusive content made only for my Patreon subscribers, as well as blooper reels and behind the scenes conversations and 
early ad-free access to my videos before anyone else. It's pretty neat. But if that is not for you, that's okay. No worries. You can still help by hitting that like button, subscribe button, or like share this video with someone you think might like it too. It costs you nothing but a second of your time and you get the satisfaction of knowing you're part of my growing online reptile community. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. And until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye.